I said it before and I'll say it again. It seems like everything is lining up perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens to win the Super Bowl this year. Team Keep It Clean, we got a huge update for our Baltimore Ravens. And before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not one single video. And leave a like on the video because it helps out a lot. And y'all have been doing that. So I appreciate y'all a ton. Y'all keep it up. Thank you for everything that y'all do on a daily basis to help with this channel. Now, on to our Baltimore Ravens. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said something, and I was very happy about that, something that I said, but I was completely wrong with what I said. And what I said a couple of weeks ago was that the Baltimore Ravens, they control their own destiny when it came to the playoffs. I thought that if the Ravens won out, this was a couple of weeks ago now, I thought that if the Ravens won out, then they would get the number one seed. And I thought that statement was true, but a couple of weeks ago it wasn't. A couple of weeks ago, if the Ravens and Chiefs had both won out, then the Chiefs, they were the ones that would get the number one seed. But guess what? Now... That statement is a fact that if the Baltimore Ravens went out, if they control their own destiny and they could get that number one seed because the Chiefs, they had a tough matchup today with the Packers and they lost. Now, there were some questionable calls, but there were some questionable calls that went both ways. And I even tweeted, I said, man, we're so used to seeing calls go the Chiefs way. It was so weird that everything wasn't going the Chiefs way like we just so used to seeing. But anyway. The Chiefs fell to the Packers. The Steelers fell to the Cardinals. And the Browns, Joe Flacco, they fell to the Rams. So this sets the Baltimore Ravens up nice. And right now, I know some people probably looking at it like, well, the Ravens aren't the number one seed right now. How could they possibly get the number one seed? Right now, if it all ended today, the Dolphins will be the number one seed. It'll be the Miami Dolphins. And then you still got uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars that are going to play later on against the Bengals. And... I mean, you could re root for the Bengals if you want to because that would help the Ravens. But essentially, it really doesn't matter because the Ravens are in firm control of everything from now on. Now, let's look at the remaining schedule. And shout out to Ryan Mink for, for tweeting this. He, uh, the, the remaining schedule for teams that are currently 9-3 uh, and three, and then, of course, the, the Jaguars, they still got to play against the Bengals. Um, but the Ravens, they play the Rams next week. Uh, they play the Jaguars. Oof, tough. They play the 49ers, Dolphins, and Steelers. So they got, they got some tough games, man. They got five tough games. If Ravens win that out, like, <laughs> get in the Super Bowl right then. Because those are five extremely tough games. Now, the Dolphins, they got the Titans, the Jets, the Cowboys, oof, the Ravens, oof, and the Bills. So, you, you know, that could go either way. So, their schedule is semi-tough. They got two easy games. Now, it is any given Sunday. But they got two easy games, um, but then they got three tough ones on the back end. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars, of course, again, they play the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, but then they play the Browns. That's tough. They play the Ravens. That's tough. They play the Bucks, the Panthers, and the Titans. So they got their tough games early on, and then they finish out with the easier games. Again, still any given Sunday. But my point is, with, with all that being said, the Dolphins right now are ahead of the Ravens. The Jaguars right now, if they win, I believe they'll be ahead of the Ravens. But since the Baltimore Ravens play both of those teams, and if the Baltimore Ravens take care of business against both of those teams, then, and then of course the rest of the teams too, Ravens will be in the number one seed. Now, I know there's still some Baltimore Ravens fans that don't want the number one seed because they are scarred from the past, but let it go. It's okay. It's okay. Now, I, I, did, I was talking to my guy, Noah, the other day from Fort Flock, and, and he made a really, really good point about the bye week, about potentially being the number one seed. And he talked about how it is like if you're, not the number, if you're the number one seed, then, yeah, you get the bye week. And he brought up 2019, how the Ravens in, in, in that last week of the season against the Steelers, they rested a lot of guys. So it was almost like they had two bye weeks. And I'm like, oh, that – that's a really good point. I never thought about it like that. And he talked about how somebody who is not the number one seed, they obviously got to keep playing. So if they keep playing, then they'll continue to have momentum. And they could have more momentum going into the game against the team that had the week off than the team that had the week off because they had the week off. So when he presented the information like that, I was like, wow, this, that makes a whole lot of sense. But I still want the Ravens to be that number one seed, man. But I, I get where he was, what he was saying, and then I, I can see how a lot of people could look at it from that angle. But one thing that is really nice about this, uh, that the Ravens control their own destiny. Um, the fact that the Chiefs lost, cool. The fact that the Steelers lost, cool. The fact that the Browns lost, cool. And while all those losses did help out the Baltimore Ravens, 
You know who helped out the Baltimore Ravens the most? The Ravens did. The Ravens did. Because the Ravens, they put themselves in this position to where at this point of the season, you coming off your bio, you ain't even had to do nothing today to be in position to control your own fate this year. So the fact that the Baltimore Ravens, they won enough games, they closed out enough games to where if they, get, if they want the number one seed, if they really want it, they can get it. That's a beautiful thing. And they don't even need any more help. They don't need any more help. Now, that's, of course, saying if the, if the Ravens go 5-0 and for these last five games. Now, as much as we would love that and as much as we hope for that, there is a chance that that doesn't happen. But at the same time, it is a chance that it does happen because we know in December, it's something about Ravens football in December, especially when they have their starting quarterbacks. They, they, they just do some wonderful things. First of all, John Harbaugh coming off the bye. I know he got this beautiful record. But then Ravens football in December. And I'm sure during the Rams game, I'm sure we're going to see all the stats and everything, all the reminders of that uh, about both of those, uh, th those statistics and whatnot. But the Ravens, like, th this is such a great position to be in. And the fact that – and I know we get frustrated with these Ravens sometimes. I, I know we just get like, oh, what are, they, what are they doing and how could they give this up? How could they do that? Why are they doing this? Why are they going away from us? What, what's going on with this team? But the fact that after 12 games, they are sitting at 9-3, and three, and it's up to them what happens next. That's a beautiful thing. It's crazy because I remember through points of this season, and it's crazy that this season has went by so fast already, but through different points of this season, especially early on, we talked about how it was a beautiful thing that despite us seeing uh, this right here that the Ravens needed to work on, this over there that the Ravens needed to get better at, this right here that we know the Ravens need to improve if they're going to go far this year, for the most part, they were still winning games. Despite the hiccups, despite the mistakes, despite the turnovers, despite the lack of discipline here, despite the missed tackle, despite giving up that play, despite giving up that touchdown, despite the missed sack, despite whatever, they are still winning the majority of their games. And even in their losses, even in the losses, they lost by a hair. Now, the loss is still a loss, whether it's a big loss or it's a small loss, but Context is important, and in all of their losses, they've lost by just that much. And if one play would have went the other way, if they would have got one more touchdown here, there, one more score, one more stop, then of course they could be twelve and zero. They could be, they could be the eleven and one. They could be ten and two, but they're nine and three. And we look at the games that they lost. They lost against the Browns most recently. Game-winning field goal by the Cleveland Browns. Game-winning field goal. And that game just, oh, they had a big lead and it diminished. They started off so strong and they fell apart. They lost against the Steelers. Oh, my goodness. Drop after drop after drop after drop. Then the, uh, then the, in, the in, end zone interception and everything just fell apart. They lost against the Colts. And it took five quarters to lose against the Colts. But they lost against the Colts in overtime. And just... The missed opportunities here, there, and everywhere. But these Baltimore Ravens, despite those losses, they still control their own fate. So this is a good thing. This, Excuse me. No, no, no. This is a great thing. And we hope that these Baltimore Ravens, hope that they run the table. Now, it's going to be tough because, again, you got some tough games. You going up against Matthew Stafford, who you know he's feeling good, especially after that game. He got Cooper Cup and, and, and uh, Puka, Puka Nuka. We got, we're going against them uh, this Sunday. Then the Jaguars, T-Law. That boy T-Law, he cold, man. He cold. Like I, I, was, I remember watching a game um, last week against the Texans. Uh, the Jaguars and Texans, I'm thinking, oh, oh boy, that, that boy, oh, that, that boy T-Law about to be shook, man. Them Jaguars about to be shook. Them Texans, the stadium is rocking. They got momentum. I thought they was about to come back. T-Law said, no, no thanks. No thanks. Um, then we got the 49ers, and they just, they just crushed the number one seed Philadelphia Eagles just now. Uh, so that's going to be an extremely tough game. Uh, and the world will be watching too So that should be a really good one The Dolphins Now I know the Dolphins They haven't, been, be, they haven't beaten any teams over 500 Well I know they, they did beat the, the Broncos And Broncos are 
well, they were over 500. I forgot what their record is now because I know they lost to the Texans uh, today. But anyway, the Dolphins, they haven't really, they haven't beat good teams. Um, but when they face bad teams, well, they, they beat up on them. But still with the Dolphins, they are obviously a very dangerous team. Even though they ain't be no good team, they still very dangerous. So you don't want to be that good team that they do beat. And then of course you got the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we know um, Kenny Pickett is hurt right now. But you, you know, like he'll be healthy by the time he play the Ravens. You know how that goes. But Steelers are, are a sneaky team too. And even though like with Kenny Pickett is it's so weird. It's like Kenny Pickett is not bad, but in my opinion, he's not this great quarterback that's just killing and making all these plays. But for him, it's like quarters one through three. Kenny Pickett's like, uh, okay, well, uh, whatever. Fourth quarter, <laughs> that's when that boy just turn it on for some reason, especially against the Ravens. So you you gotta always be fearful of that, and, and, and you gotta watch out for that. Uh, that's what these Baltimore Ravens need to do. But they know what they gotta do. We know what they gotta do. Now it's just a matter of them doing it. 